us apart by awakening in us a sense of waiting and wrestling with you. Hush within us our murmurings against your leadership. Harden us of our longing for self-determination. Help us to proclaim your Lordship as we pray the words of your Son, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. so much that we can come here, that we can find you and we can seek your guidance. 
We thank you for your caring presence in our lives. We pray all of this in Jesus' name.
and bless us to go forth as well as these offerings to do your work in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you see it?
gathered together his disciples around the table, that during supper he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he poured it, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of many. Do this in remembrance of me.
a gracious and forgiving God, we thank you for the opportunity once again to partake of this cup in remembrance of your Son, Jesus the Christ. We are reminded of his presence, blood, shed on the cross in the order that we may, may have life and have it more abundantly. Let us each examine our own lives, becoming more aware of our selfish attitudes and deeds. As we drink this cup, strengthen our resolve to follow your leading more faithfully. May, may our spirit be renewed and do it your will. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. Because they know his voice. 
but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand it, what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man who runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep then. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there, there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, He is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Bruce was a new pastor. Bruce had decided that in his church that baptisms had been a little too splashy. In fact, in some of the baptisms in a baptistry much like ours here, the choir was actually getting wet from the baptisms. And he just wouldn't have that. There were not going to be any more splashy baptisms. In fact, there would hardly be a real ripple of the water when he baptized. His first baptismal candidate was Arthur. Arthur was 77 years old. Arthur had spent much of his life attending this church, but had never felt like it was time to be baptized. But now, at 77, he decided, it's time. So, Bruce prepared him. He also had talked to the property committee in order to alleviate some of the splashing. He actually had a bar placed on the floor of the baptistry. And I need you to get on that. <laughs> he had had this bar placed on the floor of the baptistry that all candidates for baptism could place their feet on so that they wouldn't slip as they worked backwards. It was a brilliant plan, and Bruce felt pretty good about himself and his ideas and that this baptism was going to be the smoothest the church had ever seen. So they did their dry run. Everything went perfect. Bruce knew it was going to be a good day. The next day, on Sunday, they show up. They get into the baptistry, and as they're walking in, Bruce says to Arthur, Everything's going to be okay. Arthur looks at him and kind of leans in and says, What? Bruce realized that Arthur had taken his hearing aids out, which was a bit of a problem because Bruce had given Arthur a verbal signal that would let him know it was time to start going back for the baptism. And now Arthur may not be able to hear him. But that's okay. He also would give them some physical clues that it was time to go back. Everything would be fine, and I can tell you, those of us who have been through seminary, you actually do practice baptizing, so you have some ideas as to what you're doing, but it still can be complicated. Bruce introduced the idea of baptism, led the congregation through what they were doing, and then he turned to Arthur and he placed his hand behind Arthur's head and he said, Arthur, and at that moment, Arthur decided it was time to be baptized. Back Arthur went, Bruce was not at all ready, pulling Bruce down into the water with him, <laughs> splashing everywhere. The choir had never been wetter in their lives. <laughs> I tell you this story because there are a couple of things going on in it that actually relate to this morning's scripture. Oftentimes we find ourselves trying to play roles that we don't get to play. We find ourselves trying to be in a position that God did not put us in. We try to do something that is not ours to do. 
Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the gate. But oftentimes we find ourselves wanting to be the good shepherd, wanting to be the gate, wanting to <coughs> play the roles that are set aside for God to play. Oftentimes we find ourselves deciding that we will make things perfect. We will make things the way they need to be. We will be in complete control. We will make sure just like Bruce, the pastor, who had decided all that splashing just isn't necessary. And for our choir, I will try to keep the splashing to a minimum. But sometimes things just happen. Things beyond our control. We have no idea what to do about. Sometimes the candidate for baptism decides it's time to be baptized anyway. Now, to Bruce's credit, I will tell you a little bit more of the story. He didn't completely panic and just leave Arthur under the water. He got himself together and pulled Arthur back up out of the water. And in that moment, he played the role, the only role that he could play. That was life saving. Yanking Arthur back up out of the water. And more often than not, that's the role God seeks for us. Not to try to make everything exactly perfect in our own minds, because perfect in our own minds falls short of perfect in God's mind, but asks us to play the role of guide, the role of help, the role of do your part. That doesn't mean that we just take it not so seriously. We should and take our roles very seriously, but we have to be aware of what those roles are supposed to be. Arthur is just as guilty as Bruce. Arthur was ready to be baptized. And so he went back and very nearly drowned himself. We do this. We don't trust the one who is supposed to be guiding us. If Arthur had waited for Bruce's physical signals and allowed Bruce to guide him back into the water gently and brought back up, his baptism experience may have seemed a lot less life and death, although we know that baptism can be a life and death thing. It may not have been quite so immediate for Arthur. But he decided it was time to go, and so back he went. Oftentimes we decide it's time to do something, time to act, and we don't wait for God's guidance, we don't wait for God's signal to us, or perhaps we've taken, it, taken out our hearing aids, not realizing that we might need them. Now, I don't blame Arthur for taking out his hearing aid. I imagine he'd get quite the shock to the ear if he had it. But, we have to make sure that we know our roles. Too often, we want to be the gate by which people enter. We want to be the shepherd who lays down his life. But Jesus makes it very clear, and as we are celebrating the season of Easter, we are reminded again and again and again, it is not we who die for others, it is Jesus. Jesus has already done that work of salvation. Jesus has already gone to the cross and died and been resurrected. That is God's work, Jesus' work, the Good Shepherd's work. That is not our work. Too often we feel like it is our job as individuals or even as a small church to fix all the problems of the world. And so we get overwhelmed and we find ourselves not feeling like we can really do it and feeling like we have to resort to other methods and other measures to get the world just right. But that's not our job. That is not our role. We are not the ones who lay down our life for the whole world. We are not the ones who are here to guide the whole world. And when we misplace our roles, we find ourselves not able to do anything. Because we can't. We can't save the world. I can't. No individual in this room can. We as one congregation can't. But the body of Christ worldwide can. When we recognize that we are just a piece of that larger body, a piece of that good shepherd, we can see how we play our roles. Now I'm going to get a little bit confused here, mixing up the metaphors first we're part of the body of Christ, then I'm going to say we're also sheep. We are sheep. Our role is to be guided. Our role is to follow. Our role is to do what we can. Which is not a whole lot in the big picture. But 
in the small picture, we can make such a huge difference. If we focus on our sphere of influence, I was talking to a member of the congregation very recently, and he has somehow become friends with a man from Iran on the internet. And a few weeks ago, they were sending messages back and forth, and he said, I'm sorry for all the violence. And the man wrote back and he said, I am too. But what can we do about it? And this church member said to me, I've been praying over and I think I finally got it. I'm going to tell him we raise our families in love. We raise our children in love. We love those around us. And I thought, what a beautiful image for two people halfway across the world living in completely different contexts. If those two can say, I will raise my family in love, and I will teach my grandchildren love, and I will teach those around me love, that is what we can do as followers of Christ. We have a sphere of influence around us, and that doesn't mean that we don't help those across the world. It doesn't mean that we don't do what we can in response to natural disasters. But we also must take care of our sphere of influence. We show love to those that we can touch, those that we can impact. Sheep can't just say, okay, everybody's going this way. But they can kind of give each other a little nudge in the right direction. They can kind of bump up against each other and eventually with the help and guidance of the shepherd, they get to where they're going. They get to where they need to be. If the shepherd gives one sheep a little nudge, then that sheep nudges the other sheep and the other sheep and the other sheep. They get going in the right direction. The question for us today is, are we willing to play that role? We live in a world that idolizes heroes, that idolizes the new messiahs, that idolizes those who make a great influence throughout the world. We idolize those who have the biggest impact. And so oftentimes we want to be the Messiah ourselves. We want to be the hero ourselves. And we want to do the biggest possible thing, the greatest possible thing. But we are not called to be Messiahs. We are not called to be heroes. We are called to be saints. We are called to be sheep. A saint and a hero are very different. A saint is one who simply does the will of God and trusts God to do the hero work. A hero is one who wants to do all the work for themselves and receive all the praise for themselves. The question before us today is will we be heroes or will we be saints? Will we be shepherds or will we be sheep? This is a question that any of us has to answer. We have to be prepared to face it and say, this is what I will do. We choose to be heroes, we can set our own path. We can do things our way. We can do things the way we think is best. We can fix the problem splashing in baptism. We can make sure that everything goes smoothly. We can control all kinds of things, maybe. But if we choose the path of saints, the path of sheep, then we must be willing to allow every part of our lives to be guided by the shepherd. If we don't trust 100%, if we don't trust fully in the shepherd, then we will wander. We will find ourselves astray and then the wolf can attack. We will leave ourselves exposed. If we are heroes, then that attack we can handle. But if we are sheep, we must trust in God. We must allow God to be our shepherd. And it is only when we are sheep that we can say the words that we heard this morning, the words of Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He prepares a place for me to eat in the presence of my enemies. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. If there's anyone here today who has not before professed faith in Christ and the great shepherd,
we invite you to come forward and do so, to dedicate your life to trusting in his guiding hand and trusting in his care. If there's anyone here today who would like to join this body as we learn to be better sheep and to follow the shepherd, we invite you to come forward and do so. If there's anyone who would like to rededicate themselves, who would like to say, I've been trying to be the hero or the shepherd, and it's time to get back to being a sheep. We invite you to come forward as we stand and sing our hymn of invitation number 452. Here I am. Let's stand and sing.